Hi, this is Larry Trennell, Dairy Field Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, welcoming you to part two of our Beginning Dairy Farmer video series featuring the Peak Dairy and the organic grass-fed system that they have chosen. Beginning farmers have various dairy system options as they begin their dairy careers, and the Peaks picked their system because they loved working with grass pastures and not using chemicals, and with the low cost could best profit from dairy this way. So let's listen as Jeremy Peak shares his thoughts on their organic grass-fed dairy system. Hi, I'm Jeremy Peak. We have 100% grass-fed certified organic grazing dairy. We milk about 35 predominantly Jersey cows along with a few crosses. I've been farming here on this farm for about 15 and a half years. We were shipping conventional milk. Uh, we started farming here in 2001 and we weren't certified organic until uh, July of 2006. Um, but we've always been a grazing dairy. Um, grazing is kind of my passion and I think uh, well, it's my, my favorite part of milking cows, I guess. Um, and being, being that we were grazing already and we weren't using a lot of inputs, it worked pretty well to to get certified organic. Some of our keys to success, I would say, one, the major thing is because, especially because we're 100% grass fed, is forage quality and managing forage. Whether it be what's being grazed out here or whether it, it's stored forages. Um, just managing, I tend to be better at managing the pastures. Um, keeping them in a good growth stage. I, I do tend to like to graze a little bit higher and uh, like here you can see the alfalfa is starting to bloom in here. This is some stuff that we hate first crop and we're grazing it now. Profitability is something that is very important when you're dairying or it should be if you want to stay in business. Um, since we've been organic the, the prices don't fluctuate as much and it seems like we should be or we kind of have a good idea of how much, how much money we're we're bringing in, um, but it, it it still depends on how much money you're you're putting back out. So some other things that I, I that I use to determine if I'm profitable or not, if we have if we have money that we can set aside for extra projects, um, improvements that need to be made, um, maybe upgrading some machinery, things like that. Um, and just having enough money to pay to pay bills whenever they're due um, without having to worry about whether they got the milk check yet or not. Um, we've also been participating in the Dairy Trans program the last few years and it's very interesting to look at some of those numbers and the benchmarks and um, just compare ourselves to other farms that are that are similar to us. Um, some in some ways we're we're usually lower um, on well, like on milk production, sometimes we're we're on the lower end of that. But um, as far as the the quality and stuff helps bring our, our price up, so that's good. And we tend to be pretty low on the input costs. A lot of the, our input costs are pretty low. So you got to look at the whole picture. You can't just look at what you're bringing in for a check. You got to look at the expenses too, and um, make sure you're spending money where it's giving you the most most uh, bang for your buck and you're not just um, using it where it's not going to help you as much. Um, some of the most important things that I that I see for us as far as being profitable, um, forage quality is probably the top thing. Um, if, you, if you don't have good forage quality you're not gonna you're not gonna get the milk that you need. Um, in the past, I may have not ranked that so high, but since being 100% grass-fed, it makes more of a difference. You don't have the, the crutch of the grain or, you know, whatever you're using for an energy source. Um, other things would be, especially for us, since we're a small farm and we don't do any cropping other than, than haymaking for the most part and, and some annuals, is machinery costs. Make sure your machinery costs are staying w within the level that you're at. I mean, we don't, um, 
all of our stuff is older and, and I like it to be in good working order, but it doesn't have to be the, the newest best thing. Although I will say I have invested in a, in a silage baler and that was definitely, definitely a good thing to do. We, I, I have probably erred in the past on the side of being too cheap and not spending money, but I bought that silage baler and I bought a skid loader and with those two tools that helped us to be able to utilize baleage, which was a huge increase. I mean, those things virtually paid for themselves probably in the first year. Um, when you start looking at purchase costs for organic forage versus being able to make it, um, you, you can really add up money quickly, and especially the quality. The cows always eat hay that was made on this farm better than they eat uh, most anything that I buy anywhere else. So that, that's a huge, that's been a huge thing for profitability. Um, other than that, just keeping things cost low. Um, and I do most all maintenance and repair work on everything pretty much on the farm. Most important thing I would say is to invest in live or invest in your cows first. Make sure you get some good cows, especially if you're going to be um, grazing. Make sure they're they're suitable to to some extent to, to grazing, especially if you're buying a herd. Um, they've been used to that because it does make a difference. Um, but but focus on that um, by paying for cows and buying cows and. Um, your, your facility needs to be something that's, that's usable. Um, I mean, we've gotten by for 15 years with the stall barn. Yes, I'd like to put in a little parlor and some kind of other housing, but we've gotten by very, very cheaply on facility costs, virtually, you know, virtually nothing for facility costs. I mean, there was some startup costs, but compared to other things. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. Um, and then, uh, have, uh, if you don't have experience grazing, go to some pasture walks or just go visit some farms where they are grazing and get an idea of, of what, what kind of management they're using.